Hello and welcome to our portfolio presentation on the Spanish conquest. In this video, we will be talking about the fall of the Aztec Empire and the personalities and worldviews of the Spanish and Aztec people. So let's get started. First of all, the people drawn in green will represent Cortes and the Spanish, and all the people drawn in red will represent the Aztecs and other, na other neighboring tribes. Cortes is known by his eyebrows. In 1518, a young Spanish-born noble and conquistador, Hernan Cortes, was appointed captain of a new Spanish expedition to the American mainland. Cortes visited the coast of Yucatan and eventually landed at Tabasco in Mexico's Bay of Campeche with around 500 soldiers, 100 sailors, and 16 horses. And right there in the middle is Tenochtitlan, which we will learn more about later. There, he won over the local Indians and was given a slave by the name of Malinche or Marina, and eventually she came to be fluent in Spanish, Aztec, and Mayan languages. She served an extremely valuable advisor to Cortes. Her name, however, is now known to be a traitor or a disloyal countryman due to her part in helping the Spanish succeed in taking the Aztec Empire. Cortes later sailed off the Mexican coast and founded the area now known as Veracruz. Here he trained his army and then burned his ships to ensure their loyalty to the conquest. After hearing rumors of an extremely wealthy Aztec empire located in the Mexican interior, Cortes began fighting his way to the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. Now, why would Cortes put his life at risk for the conquest of a potentially wealthy city? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The Spanish worldview at the time was greatly affected by three things, goods, God, and glory. In fact, the Spanish crown even licensed the conquistadors, 15th century explorers who sail across uncharted waters to gain political power, fame and fortune, convert new souls to Christianity, and to claim new land for their country. The stakes were high, but many still tried. On the way to Tenochtitlan, Cortes defeated some of the local Indians. However, they soon became Cortes' allies after hearing of his plans to conquer the Aztec rulers, which many of them hated. The nation of Tezcaltec even sent 1,000 warriors to join him on his journey to Tenochtitlan. This proved to be an extremely successful tactic on Cortes' part. During the same time the Spanish were getting ready for their conquest, the Aztecs were dealing with several dark omens from their priests, some of which included possible signs of disaster, such as comets pelting the earth, the burning of a temple, and the ghostly crying of a woman. The Aztecs took their omens and prophecies from their priests very seriously. They were extremely dedicated and loyal to their gods, and believed that their main purpose in life was to keep the gods happy and offer blood sacrifices to keep the universe in check and prevent the world from ending. Therefore, as you can tell, the Spanish and Aztec worldviews varied greatly. The ruler at the time, Moctezuma II, had no idea what to expect from all these forbidding omens and approached everything very, very carefully. At the time, there was also a prophecy of the god Quetzalcoatl returning from the east to reclaim his throne. This god was supposedly different than the rest, with a white face and a beard. Quetzalcoatl was prophesied to return in one radiant, which just happened to be the year 1519 on the Aztec calendar, which just so happens to be the year Cortes and his troops entered Tenochtitlan. Coincidence? Mm, maybe, but the most unfortunate coincidence in all of history. This prophecy was one of the reasons why Moctezuma greeted Cortes as a god, and would end up being one of the main events which led to the downfall of Moctezuma. When the Spanish and the Aztec finally meet, the Spaniards and their Aztec allies were allowed to enter Tenochtitlan unopposed on November 8, 1519. Cortes was perceived to be a god and took advantage of Montezuma's hospitality by taking him hostage. Soon after this happened, Montezuma passed away. It is still unknown whether Cortes himself killed Montezuma or if he was killed in an uprising of the Aztec people. In May 1521, Cortes and the Spaniards began the start of what would become to be a three-month siege over the Aztec capital. In August 1521, the city of Tenochtitlan finally fell and became one of the key events in the formation of New Spain, now known as Mexico.
Some character traits that helped Cortez take down the Aztec was that he knew how to fuel pre-existing rivalries. He was clever and strategic and took advantage of the superstitions and practices of the Aztec. Cortez was an extremely driven man, willing to go to extreme measures to get what he wanted. He destroyed the Aztec home and way of life and blundered through anything that stood in his way. He was viewed as a hero in Spain, bringing back lots of wealth and colonizing New Spain, making it the most powerful country at the time. In Mexico and Central America, he can be viewed as Batman. A Batman? Yes, bad, bad man. A person who brought chaos and strife to the civilizations already living there. Whether Cortez was viewed as a hero or as a villain, there is no doubt that he played a significant part in one of the world's greatest events in history, the fall of the Aztec Empire and the start of New Spain.